Hi, this is John Sebastian celebrating 20 years of retrospectives with John Broughton on 3SER Casey Radio. I believe your father was, was quite an accomplished harmonica player. That's true, yes. Uh, wonderful classical player, uh, toured extensively, uh, had uh, Vila Lobos and Cherupnin and several fairly decent uh, writers of the time uh, composed for him, and um, certainly an inspiration. I guess you would have had quite a bit of influence over yourself developing your taste in music. Well, certainly, uh, you know, you listen to somebody six, eight hours a day, and soloists, uh, concert soloists, practice that much, and 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 you know, you, you something's bound to penetrate. Of course, yeah. You experienced firsthand the the folk scene around Greenwich Village in the sixties. That must have been an exciting time. Any special memories there? Well, I uh, certainly remember uh, every minute of it. In fact, uh, it was a time when I was uh, really learning a craft and uh, uh, being exposed to people like Mississippi John Hurt and carrying guitar around for Lightning Hopkins and and uh, then uh, uh, l- learning more about playing uh, in groups with uh People like the Even Dozen Jug Band, who was a kind of an early uh, band that I was in with Maria Muldor and Steve Katz and Stefan Grossman and a number of other people, Josh Rifkin, David Grisman. And uh, that was sort of our first band experience. So, I mean, it was a, a, a time when I was really learning what I do mentioned uh, Mississippi John Hurt and Lightning Hopkins. Uh, there must have been a wealth of information learning from those guys. Any things in particular that, that they taught you that, that you take with you even today? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mississippi John, who was much more forthcoming about teaching, would, uh, I mean, he literally uh, showed me the ins and outs of thumb picking, and uh, I used to watch Lightning. Lightning wouldn't instruct, but uh, you, you could pick up stuff from watching him. How important were those early bands? You mentioned the Even Dozen Jug Band. How important were the bands like that for you in, in terms of your grounding as a musician? Well, it was the experience and the variety, I would say, rather than the specific um, uh, work in any one uh, of those situations. It was the cumulative effect of, oh, playing with Mississippi John, where, which is a very sort of a... Of a, a country blues setting and then next week there's a you know a job playing harmonica for the serendipity singers or something you know so it was really back and forth from uh the sublime to the ridiculous but that that's what teaches you i think yeah can you still remember the time leading up to it and including the, the formation of the love and spoonful uh, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you what do you what do I want to know? Oh, just how it all came together, basically. Oh boy, this is hard to abbreviate. But <laughs> uh, Zalyanovsky and I met uh, over a, a, a party at uh, Cass Elliot's house. Uh, the two of us started wandering around the village with an idea for a group, uh, and eventually found Steve Boone and Joe Butler, uh, and uh, there we were. We started working at a local coffee house. Uh, which had never really had anything like rock and roll in there before. So it it took a little time, uh, six months or so. We got fired a few places, and Mm. then then, uh, we started to get good after a while. Did you know straight off the the sound that you were after there with with the band, or did that come really with the passing of time? Well, uh, we did know. uh, No false modesty here. We, We did know what we were after. And it did take a little while to get to where we could sound like we wanted to sound. But essentially, it was uh, two people who used uh, their fingers rather than picks and were playing uh, a rock and roll style that was heavily influenced by jug band music and and, uh, various types of American music, rockabilly, country, 
we, we were very free in our influences, except we tried not to sound British. Sam was always intent on uh, promoting that good time music image. Is that a quality that you've always uh, tried to uphold uh, throughout your solo career as well, not taking it all too seriously, I guess? Not necessarily. Uh, you know, I mean, sometime or another you take something seriously. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, you know, it's always... It's nice for journalists to be able to abbreviate. Yeah. And if they could abbreviate in that way, they could talk about us. And mm-hmm. so whatever shortcomings that abbreviation might have as far as, well, gee, I do write a sad song now and then, or whatever, uh, you have to forgive because the upside of it is that, you know, you're in some teeny bopper magazine because <laughs> they, they could explain what it was you did. Yeah. Of all those, that, that string of classic uh, singles you had back in that time, uh, any one of those do you think has stood the test of time more than any others? Do You Believe in Magic certainly has a special place because it was the first thing that I ever heard on the radio of my own. So mm-hmm. that, that, was, that was special. Was it a, um, pretty much a sudden decision of yours to, to leave the band or was it brewing for a while? Well, I think it was brewing for a while. Uh, the... the uh, difficulties uh, losing a member, uh, then losing a producer, and the general chemistry was generally uh, kind of uh, gone. And and, uh, I still had uh, the same instincts as a musician that I'd always had, and, and a lot of my contemporaries had gone on to begin to play in other situations and uh, although I had enjoyed playing with this foursome for uh, three years or so, I, I also missed uh, the opportunity to play with some of my other friends and these were all people who had uh, come up with me and now many of them were gaining recognition in their own rights and, and so I, I wanted the opportunity to play with as many people as I, I could and uh, you know nowadays um, these kind of uh, albums where a whole bunch of people get together and 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 play on one guy's album is fairly common uh, at the point at which uh, that first solo album came out uh, it was kind of uncommon for band members to uh, jump around and play in other bands yes yeah, so, sure so you know, it was hey, like that movie uh you'll understand why he was pretty much out of it and uh, he doesn't like to speak about it at all. So he kindly tiptoed around it, and uh, we got on to other things, as you'll hear in this next portion of our chat with John Sebastian. Are you comfortable with uh, the other past members of the band going out these days and playing the oldie circuit using the Love and Spoonful name? Um, it's... Uh, uh, how can I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is... It's legal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice answer. <laughs> yeah. Did you encounter problems early in your solo career with, with people being um, uh, too intent on comparing your solo work to to your previous band work? No, I you know I I, I it probably was happening, but I I can't say that. It, I, I was paying much attention to it. Yeah. There's times when you're, you're kind of looking to reviews and that kind of thing for an indicator, but that wasn't one of them because I knew that what, you know, I knew that there was a large part of what I had to offer that, that wasn't diminished by changing whatever bass player or something, uh, whereas there, there was certainly advantages to being able to play with um, other instrumentalists. Uh, you can play different styles that maybe might have eluded the original foursome. So I was enjoying myself. Uh, talk briefly about Woodstock. I'm sure a day hasn't passed since that day that uh, you haven't been asked to talk about it. Uh, t- Wonderful situation. I really enjoyed it. It was a uh, it was uh, exciting. Oh, I, I, I said everything I can say about that, and it's all in print, too, so I don't want you to look like too much of a, a repeater of information. Uh, you know, it's, it's all been said. Yeah, it was great. What did you think of Woodstock 94? Uh, I enjoyed myself there as well. Uh, played with my little jug band uh, Sunday morning. 
and um, it was it was lots of fun. I, I, I was I was thrilled to be asked uh, a second time. Now you had a, a brief return to chart success in the mid seventies with the the uh, TV theme for Welcome Back, Carter. Was that a commission song, or is that one you already had in, in your? Uh in your repertoire there? No, it was very much, uh, it was commissioned. It was created for the show. Um, a fellow came to my manager saying, I'm looking for kind of a Sebastian type guy to write a theme song, and my manager had just started working with me two weeks before that, so. Another thing you've had a hand in doing in recent times is writing for uh, animated features. Yes. Do you tackle uh, uh, writing a project like that any differently to, to writing for one of your own recordings? Well, uh, y y there is a difference in that you are um, you are in a team in that situation. Uh, thematic writing um, is not unlike the process of accompanying um, uh, for a musician. In other words, you're 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 trying to make somebody else's idea shine in in that situation, just like you are when you're doing your job as an accompanist. So I enjoy both, uh, both uh, postures. Tell us about the, the J-Band and, and the background of the guys there. Well, the J-Band got started uh, as a result of a, a group called the Black Italians that uh, uh, started in New York. I was playing with a friend of mine named Jimmy Vivino who may may come to you via television late at night for uh, if you see uh, Conan O'Brien? Yeah, we get him on cable here. Yeah, well, uh, that guitarist there uh, is uh, Jimmy Vivino, and uh, he and I had begun a friendship and a, a playing relationship before uh, that job came along, and uh, joined. Uh, wonderful drummer named James Wormworth and uh, eventually brought in Fritz Richmond who was the wash tub and jug player for the original Jim Queskin jug band uh, wonderful uh, for, uh, second generation jug band that is it was the first wave of 60s kids that got interested in that style of music you did anything in particular? Did you, did you feel a really a strong pull to, to want to get back to some musical roots with this outfit? Well, um, it, it was a... Um, it, it really just sort of gained momentum all by itself, I, I have to say. Uh, I didn't really set out to do it, but it was an odd kind of a thing where actually a record company... Uh, guy called me up and said, I'll bet you could put together a hell of a jug band. And I said, you know, I, I could put together the best hmm. jug band. And then I started thinking about it, and it just seemed like uh, it was a timely thing to do. I guess uh, I guess also now with the, with the pressures of striving for chart success and things like that well behind you, you're in a period where you can really take this time now to, to, to sit back and derive some enjoyment out of your music? Um... I guess uh, uh, you know music is a, is a continuum for me, and 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 it, it's always a joy. Now, are there any future recording plans for the band? Oh yeah, um, uh, the I Want My Roots album, which is out on Music Masters, uh, may be a little hard to find in Australia, but that uh, came out in '94 um, or '95, and uh, the. Um, uh, current album I want, uh, which is called uh, "Chasing Gus's Ghost," is uh, going to be released uh, in the new year on uh, Hollywood Records. Oh, terrific! And that one is really a whale of an album. And uh, what's the extent of your your live work with with the J Band over there? Um, well, it it uh, was considerable right after the release of "I Want My Roots." Uh, then uh, over the last few months, it kind of dwindled while we were really working on the on the album itself. And if there was enough interest generated, would you consider a down under trip? Oh, absolutely. 
What? Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, I guess the the distinction is that um, I'm I'm always interested in in having music take me to new places. That that's always exciting. Um, and of course, what would be exciting would be the opportunity to work with the jug band in front of an Australian audience. Oh, yeah. uh, I would say, you know, rather than, um, I guess I wouldn't want an Australian audience to expect an oldies act. No. Uh, but but uh, if they could accept an even more oldies act, uh, then it might <laughs> be okay. Uh, we have a wealth of uh, fine blues and folk festivals, which I think that the J Band will be very much suited to. The uh, the music that you're listening to these days, what is catching your ear these days? Well, you know, I I hate to say it, but not a lot of modern stuff is, yeah. is catching my ear. Um, although I listen to the radio as much as the next person, um, I um, I'm surprised to find that. Um, that I, I really am beginning to uh, dig into some of these uh, older records that uh, have been inspirations before and uh, and sort of digging deeper in the process of uh, finding out about the songs that, that I thought I knew about, I, I'm learning more. So, so it is a continuum. Outside of the J-Band, what else would be on your books? as far as plans for, uh, for 1999 go? Well, uh, I think the primary plan, and it does, it does kind of include the J-Band, uh, is the, um, uh, the, that uh, Disney has shown some interest in uh, finding work uh, for the Jug Band uh, doing uh, uh, soundtracks for, uh, you know, period movies and things like that. And that uh, would be very exciting. Okay, John, just before we wind up, uh, if a budding young musician came to you and you had just a few minutes to spend with them and they were after some career advice, what would be the, the one thing you made sure you told them? Uh, start young, mm -hmm. work hard, uh, and stay to, you know, stay to your course. Short and sweet and... Uh, probably for sound advice to you. Okay, John, look, thanks for your time. Well, thank you kindly. Much appreciated. Uh, best of luck with the, the new album in the new year, and uh, we'll certainly be looking out for that, and hopefully uh, we'll catch you down under before long. Well, all right then. Okay. I look forward to the possibility. You take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.